Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Happy St. Patty's Day. St. Patrick's Day is today. I know you can't imagine why I have a green face or green hair or green anything, but that is the reason. Uh, I'm super excited to have back James Dillon. Is, Dillman is with us. James Dillon. Woo! James Dillman is with us. Let's talk about it as the hashtag. Um, she's got some amazing stuff coming up and an event and all sorts of good stuff that she always brings to the table. And you're looking great in the green bandana and the red hair. Welcome, James. How you doing? Good. I got to represent, you know, all the Irish I can and the one day that it encompasses. I got my uh, my Brooklyn Brewery. Nice. You got it all going on today. Sure well, I'm very green happy nails. to have you. Oh, you got, see, I, yeah, I did not go that far. <laughs> this is enough, and this only because it washes. Is, am I even It looks there? great. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, so for the people who did not watch the first time, uh, tell them a little bit about you. The audience loves origin stories. So they kind of want to know a 411 on you. My elevator pitch. Uh, I'm yeah. a Orlando, <laughs> Florida Orlando native. I grew up here in town and I um, went to Seminole High School in Sanford, graduated there, um, went throughout all the training for SAC University and improv um, as my background, as well as worked at all the theme parks. I did my time um, from there. <laughs> Your from community there again, service work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I served 14 years. I did my time. <laughs> Um, from there, I got into the event business and working with different people, creating different events. Um, my current day job, actually, I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of flowers right now. Uh, my day job, I work for Lee Forest Design, doing weddings and events, um, floral and decor, which is really cool creative side of things. Um, and then the outlet I have on the other side of that is I have a burlesque group called Corsets and Cuties. And we've been going for almost eight years crazy enough. That's a unbelievable I know. to me. I know. I was like, how did that happen? Um, so that's been a really, really uh, successful and fun thing to do here in my hometown. Um, but now I'm venturing a little bit outside of my improv and burlesque and I'm taking on my first show as a director. Woo! Um, Congratulations. Yeah, I'm super excited. Thank you. And it's a show that I've performed a couple times before, um, but it hasn't been done here in Orlando for a little while. So uh, I thought, you know, coming out of COVID, all of us performers are finding our legs again on stage. We need to find outlets again to express ourselves and keep conversations going. And for that reason, it, um, I chose the Vagina Monologues for this show. I love it. And so really quick, tell them, I, I want to get into that, but I yeah. want you to tell them about uh, the corsets and cuties, cuties and corsets. Corsets and cuties, yeah. That's what we, I just love the concept. And if you haven't seen um, the, that particular type of show, you're missing out. So tell them just a little bit about that. And then I promise we will talk oh, about sure. vagina monologues. Well, it was started out of the need for um, a place for performers to share their craft and, and share their art that didn't necessarily fit into the theme park mold anymore. Um, you know, uh -huh. we get to a certain age where we're not princesses anymore, but we're not quite fairy godmothers. Um, <laughs> there's people who don't fit the size mold of what is drawn on those animated pages. Um, and then there's some people who have a lot of talent, but aren't necessarily singers, aren't necessarily dancers, um, but they can entertain a crowd, give them a microphone. That's kind of what I do. So, uh, you know, this was created out of the um, need and want to give our friends as well as ourselves, me and my partner who started it with me, a place where we can play and have a good time and entertain an audience and then bring them along on the ride with us to have a good, you know, party atmosphere, um, empowerment, feeling good about yourselves, loving your body as it is, um, giving people back that um, sexiness that you feel when you know you look good and you feel good and having an audience full of people loving you and cheering you and throwing money at you <laughs> is pretty much the best way to do it. I love it. And do you uh, just, and then we'll take a deep dive. Do you uh, do the show regularly? Do you, uh, where, where do people find you? Is it going to be on Facebook that they'll find? You can uh, find us on our website, which is corsetsandcuties.com. We're also on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on that TikTok. <laughs> my 12 year old, thing. Yeah, my 12 -year -old has helped me with that. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> it's I know. But uh, yeah, they can find us online. We do regular shows um, between Orlando and Sanford. Our next one coming up is April 24th at Theater Weston. We love Sanford. Such a great talent. It's where I grew up. 
and uh, and then we'll be at the Orlando Fringe. And so, um, you know, stay Amazing. tuned for all of our social media for all those announcements. And, you know, then we have our big amateur show in September, our anniversary in August. And then we do a Halloween and a holiday show to round out the year. You are a busy young lady. That is. I like the young part. Thank you. You are young. I mean, compared to me, uh, you're definitely young in general. Tell me about. Uh, so let's talk about. Let's talk about it. Let's talk uh, about let's it. Talk about it. So tell us what's going on. Um, give me, give us the 411. Well, the Vagina Monologues was started in the 90s with Eve Ensler, who's the author, and she interviewed hundreds, thousands of women to get their stories of what it's like to be a woman, what it is to have the vagina, if you can, you know, say the word and not have people shriek, um, you know, it's what they're funny, right? It, it is funny. You know, yeah. people do, when people say it, Yes. I, I, it doesn't shock me, but I know people who get who blush still with that. Yes. And actually, a couple of my actresses are the same way. And they said that when I asked them to do the show, their visceral reaction to it at first was the exact reason they knew they had to do this show. Um, I say let's talk about it because there's so much that's taboo still when it comes to women and females and our bodies and female health and acknowledgement and acceptance of us, um, you know, how we are and natural things that happen. And, you know, stories are coming out of women whose parents or moms never talked to them about their period. And so that was a big deal when it happened. And, you know, it's kind of timely now that this big movie come out, what's the turning red or going red, the, the Pixar movie that's getting a bunch of. Yes, I heard about a that. bunch of controversy because it discusses a 13 year old girl going through those changes and people don't want to hear about it. People don't want to talk about it. And I'm like, hello. Everybody with a vagina has to deal with that. <laughs> like I, I'm, 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 I'm amazed in this day and age, especially with the access to so much. Everything's at our fingertips. Yeah. Uh, why that? Why that would be such a um, thing to make you shy? It's so funny. We can hear commercials all day long on the radio about ED and get pills to make somebody's uh, <laughs> soldier stand. We only at call attention. it ED. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you say the word vagina and. The one thing about the, the show, there's like 50 different words of what people call it in different you know sections of the country. It's so funny that we have to make synonyms for something that clinically is called a vagina. It's it's funny to me. I, I you would think that we were a little bit past our purit puritan yeah. roots. Yeah, it all goes back do. to those puritans. It you know it's and it's funny to me because I feel like the more that we talk about things and say those words over and over again. Yes. I mean, you, it's just better for all of us. And, uh, but, you know, one thing the last couple of years have shown me is that there's still a lot of repressed Oof. in our worlds. Yeah. Um, so and tell us about the, tell us about the actual show itself. Okay. The show itself will be shown on, um, March 26th, just a couple of days before my birthday. And it's a fundraiser for One Heart Women and Children. All proceeds for the show are going back to help a local charity here in our community. And all the actresses have donated their time and talents. And we're super excited about that. Um, Carla Stan at Mainframe Realty is our sponsor. So she's, you know, a powerhouse lady behind it. And then Timoqua Arts Foundation actually stepped forward just a couple days ago to become our new presenting venue. So that was interesting. That is <laughs> um, amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very, very grateful for them. Our eight o'clock show was already sold out. And our 10 o'clock show only has a handful of tickets left. See, that's where you want to be. That shows you that. The show There's a need out. for it. Yes. And yes. there's a little bit of intrigue, but I love people who are intrigued, who are still willing to step outside what they feel like are their nine dots. Yes, exactly. Something. And the show features um, some really great talent from around town. People will know, um, you know, actresses that are within it, like Nicole Dupre um, for Opera del Sol. Um, we have Deborah Roberts from Real Radio 104.1. And Representative Anna Escamani is joining us. Is she? Good so I've you. got some powerful ladies as well as, uh, you know, 10, 12 others that you'll know from different shows around town, from the theme parks. I, I was very, very lucky to just reach out to people. I could hear their voices while I was reading the script and everyone said yes. So what a great, what a great uh, lineup and start to the show itself. It's a, it's a powerful piece. It, it is. And so for those who have no idea about it, who yeah. probably can't say the word vagina out loud, uh, give us a little, give us like the overview. If you were trying to describe it to someone, what could, what could someone expect? 
Well, I don't want people to be afraid of it. That's the first thing that people, the reaction that we get is, oh, I couldn't watch that. But it's, it's a collection of stories from women all over, all ages, all, um, you know, sexual orientations. And it's heartwarming in places. It's very funny in places. You can identify with some of these situations, the stories tell. And then it's sometimes very jarring and very um, scary because of some situations around the world that maybe we aren't too familiar with, but we need to be made familiar with. And I'm very glad to bring that to this community. I think it's just the, the, the we talked about it earlier. You have we have to continue to have conversations, even if they make a certain group of people uncomfortable. Absolutely, and, and we just have to continue to adapt. The, the only way for us to grow and progress is for us to have open dialogue, yes, um, and have a discussion and not be afraid of a word. I think. Yeah, that- I'm a mom. I'm a daughter. I'm a girlfriend. You know, um, I've had the situations with the conversation of my mom growing up, the conversations with my partners throughout my life. And now I'm, you know, I have a 12 year old daughter and we're going through that. So seeing it from all these different aspects and now putting this show up about 10 years after I first, you know, uh, performed it, it's, it all comes around in a different light now. And it's so neat to see other people grasping it and going forward with the let's talk about it. Love it. All right. So on that note, how can they get tickets? The last few tickets left. Yeah. How, can we, how can we support you? Grab them. It's at eventbrite.com. And when you go on there, you just search for Orlando events and it's the vagina monologues. Easy enough. Tickets remain for the 10 PM show and all proceeds go to benefit one heart women and children. It's beautiful. You are amazing. Thank you for being flexible. Uh, you know, I love to promote anything you do because you give back so much to the community and bring such a light where there isn't always a light. And yeah, I, I appreciate I, it. I appreciate that so much. Uh, give a big hug and a kiss to leave for me. I love will. You. He's amazing. Uh, thank you for coming on. So go to eventbrite.com, search Orlando events, and then go look for the Vagina Monologues, which is um Amazing. I just think it's amazing what you're doing. I'm excited. All right. Thank you for back. having green hair. <laughs> yes. I mean, this green hair is woo, neon insanity. It's so festive. Um, and you know what? I, it, and of course, I'm here at, the, at Citrus Club. So I walked in and people were like, what is happening? Uh, I'm not afraid. to. Sh- I'm not afraid of shock value at all. Uh, um, I really want you all to go out. There's a few tickets left. Please Please support. And if this is something that you feel uncomfortable talking about, that's like James said earlier, that's exactly why you need to buy a ticket, learn more and expand your horizons in the way you think. So thank you so much. You're amazing. Come back anytime. Y'all get out and support the arts. You're always asking me about cool things to do in Orlando. Here's something really cool. And it's charitable. I don't know how much better you could get. Thanks, James, for being Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Happy St. Patrick's Day, you guys. We'll be back later, I think. Um, I don't know what's happening today. It's a crazy day. Have a great one, James. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.